The next thing I'm going to inspect is the valve guide condition. Hi and welcome to Classic ATS. During this eight part series we're going to show you how to fully build your 911 air cooled cylinder head. And there's two ways of doing this. The first way is to use a no-go gauge. So I've set this at the wear limit. So any gauge, any valve guide that this pin will slide into is going to be worn out and we're not going to waste any more time doing any measurement on it. So if I just go down on the first one, you can see slides into the guide easily. And this one is really worn. On the next one here, it won't actually fit in. Even for those ones where it did not slide into. So I have these two cylinder heads right here that I know the exhaust guides failed immediately. No point doing any more work to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my valve and I'm going to install the valve into the guide. If I lift it off the seat slightly, now I don't want to bring it all the way up here because that's going to give me a false reading. The collet section is engaged in the guide and it's going to allow it to move more. We want to keep it nice and close to the seat. And I'm just going to bring it up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock the valve and take note of how much movement we have. So with the dial gauge on and I'm rocking the valve back and forth you can see this one has a clearance of uh, approximately about 0.35. The discard value on this valve guide should be 0.2 of a millimeter. So this was one where the go no go gauge would not start in the hole, but is well and truly worn out. So none of the intake guides would take the no go gauge, but when we set up and measure, we can see that they're outside the usable range. The clearance on the intakes is 0.15 of a millimeter. And on this particular one that I'm set up, I'm seeing about 0 0.19, 0 0.18 to 0.19. So we're going to be going ahead and replacing all of the valve guides. The valve guides installed in the cylinder heads are a press fit. That means that the valve guide is larger than the actual hole size and it is pressed into the hole. We have to machine the back of the valve guide down first so that we can drive the valve guide out in the direction that it was pushed in. So I have our cylinder head set up in our milling machine. I'm just using a standard milling vise to hold the head flat and parallel. I have my angle set. Uh, this is a 28 degree angle and I'm just using a standard end mill. I have a stop set up on my intake gasket side. I will go ahead and cut all the exhausts at one shot. All I want to do is machine the top of the valve guide off until it meets the actual aluminum boss. Once I'm down flush with the head, I'm just going to remove it and slide in another cylinder head. So once I've cut all of the exhaust guides down, all I've done is I've flipped my cylinder head around in the vise. I changed my start position, I've re-zeroed on the valve guide and I'm going to go ahead and cut all of the intake guides down as well. So now we've got all of our valve guide top machined off, we are going to use a valve guide punch in an air hammer. This is a stepped punch, so it's designed to actually go down into the valve guide and support it. Just another point that I want to talk about, if we tried to just drive out the valve guide from the back side or from the port side, what can happen when we do this and we start hitting on it is this can actually mushroom.
and when it mushrooms it has a tendency to where you can crack these boss areas down around these surfaces. When we drive this out we just want to push it through. It shouldn't take a huge amount of force and we kind of want to feel what's going on. If for some reason the guide doesn't come out relatively easy you want to stop and possibly have to machine the ID of the guide to make it a little less pressure. I have all of the valve guides in front of me that I've removed and another quick note just to kind of uh, bring up more we why we don't want to drive the valve guide out from the valve side end. This line of carbon right here which is built up against the guide, if you do actually succeed in driving this in without mushrooming the uh, front of the guide, what you'll tend to do is drag this carbon through the hole and it will also cause some scoring damage in the cylinder heads. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a relatively clean valve guide and my micrometer and I just want to see what size the guides are right now and I'm just going to go ahead and measure this one and this is measuring at 13.045. A standard valve guide is 13.06 to 13.049. So we can pretty much assume that these are most likely the original guides. The next step is to clean up the holes in our cylinder heads. Now if you look at some of the valve guides like this one for example, you can see when we've driven the valve guide out how it's got some scoring and there's been some material transfer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fine hone and this one is designed for aluminum and soft metals and I'm going to hone all of the boards in the cylinder heads first. So to hone the bore I've just got it set up in my cordless drill. I want to move the same manner that I would be if I was honing a cylinder so I'm going to be moving fairly quickly up and down the bore. Next I'm just going to take my flashlight and light up the bore from the bottom side and move it around 360 degrees. We want to have a nice smooth finish because otherwise if there's any kind of galling or any kind of debris in that hole it's going to bind up when we try and press in a new valve guide. So now that I've honed the valve guide bore I'm going to go ahead and use my inside bore mics and just take a measurement of our hole size first because the valve guide needs to be an interference fit we need to be able to take an accurate measurement of what our actual hole size is going to be and it looks like this one's coming up at just a hair over standard Standard size on the bore is 13 millimeters. We're at 13.007. Now, if any of the valve guide bores do not clean up with just a hone, then we'll have to run a ream down, in which case we'll have to go with a second oversize on the valve guide insert. We took a preliminary measurement of valve guides to, so that we could place an order and now we've got our valve guides have come in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually measure the bore of my valve guide and I'll usually measure it in three places just to see if there is a taper or anything going on that I need to know about. This one we can see has a slight taper. It goes from 13.085 all the way up to 13.091. So that's not a big deal, but when we go to install these into the cylinder head, they are a press fit. The press fit dimension needs an interference of 0.05 of a millimeter. 
So our current hole is 13.01 millimeters. So if I was to take our new valve guide and just press it directly into the hole in the cylinder head, the tolerance is going to be somewhere around 0 0.08 on the interference. Now you could probably force that in, but it is actually going to be too tight and you run the risk of damaging either the valve guide. If it gets stuck going in halfway, then that's going to cause it to be an issue where we're going to have to most likely drill it out and then refinish the guide hole again. Or you could run the, dam uh, run the chance of causing damage when you're driving it into the top of the valve guide. So even if you do get it seated, it may not be usable and have to be changed. So what we're going to do is we need to ream our hole to a size of 13.03 to 13.04 millimeters in order to have the correct interference fit. So I've got our cylinder head set up into our milling machine. I've got our 13.038 millimeter ream set up into the milling machine. Now, when we went ahead and took the valve guides up, we set our milling head at a 62 degree angle. This is just a rough angle that works great for removing the guides on both the intakes and the exhaust. However, when it comes to reaming the bores or making any precision adjustments, the intake and exhaust valve guides are on considerably different planes. So it's important that you set up the correct angle for the guide that you're working on. And I'm just going to go ahead and lubricate the ream and then ream the hole, give it a light hone and we'll remeasure it. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses whenever you're doing any machine work. I've just got a light oil of cutting oil on the machine. I also have a very slow reaming speed. It's around 450 RPM. When I'm coming in, reams are somewhat self-centering. I have dialed in on the hole, so I'm relatively centered. And I'm just going to bring it in and bring it down throughout the entire guide bore. Now since we're only taking a small amount, it's not going to have a large amount of chips coming out. I can feel the ream cutting. And we can see on the, on the ream that we've got our little fine shavings of the amount of material that we removed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cylinder head. We're going to clean the oil out of it just using an evaporative cleaner first and give it a light hone and measure to see where we are at. Then we'll go ahead and wash out the, le the remnants of the honing and measure to make sure that we are now on the correct size. So now I'm just going to take my split bore gauge again and I'm going to remeasure our hole. and confirm our sizes. We have 13.037. So if we subtract the 13.037 from our 13.088 or 091, that's going to give us an interference fit of right around 0 0.05. So that's going to be exactly where we want it. Now, there's two ways of handling this situation. I've chosen to ream the cylinder head because it also cleans up and makes the hole nice and round again. And it cleans up any scoring or damage that may have happened when we drove the old valve guide out. The other way to do this would be to take our valve guide and set it up in the lathe and machine it to the 13.05 of a millimeter. So there's two different ways to get to the same result. I've chosen to ream the cylinder head. I think that's usually the better way to go. 
So now that we've set the hole sizes on our cylinder heads, I'm going to go ahead and install the valve guides. To install the valve guides, I'm just going to use a valve guide punch. This punch is specifically designed for valve guides. It has a long shaft that goes almost all the way down the valve guide. That's going to help support it. And it also has a nice recessed shoulder so the valve guide won't bind up against it. Now, because it's an interference fit, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a very light coating of grease. And all this is going to do is just help the valve guide not bind up as it is driven in because we don't want it to get stuck onto the aluminum. So to drive it in, I'm just going to take the valve guide on my punch. I'm on a, a rubber mat right here so it doesn't hurt the bottom of the cylinder head. I'm just going to bring it up and center it in the guide. This is going to tap in with a medium amount of force. And I've just driven it in until it stops. There is a stop on these that allow you to know when you're at the correct installed height. We will go ahead and check the valve guide installed heights uh, once we've installed them all. And if we need to dress any down, we can do that as well. So now we've got our valve guides installed. If we try to fit a valve, we'll find that usually the valve will not go in. This is because as the valve guide is pressed into the cylinder head, it actually squashes the internal ball. Also, a lot of the times the replacement valve guides will come in a semi-finished size so that they allow you to set the clearances. So I'm going to set the cylinder head back up in the milling machine and I'm going to take my 9mm ream. Now this one is a stepped ream. That just means that it'll help guide straight down versus a chucking ream, which is just a straight ream. Doesn't matter which one you use, just personal preference. And we're going to ream these to a 9mm size. Okay, so I've got my cylinder head set up. I've still got my same angle for the intake valve. I have my stepped ream set up on the hole. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lubricate it just to help it cut. And then I'm going to go ahead and run it all the way through the valve guide. So now I've got the head out of the machine, if I take my new intake valve, go ahead and insert that. Now we find that it slides in and out very nicely. We'll go ahead and check the actual clearance on the bench and then if there's any small clearance adjustments need to be made, we'll do that using the finishing hone. So now I've finished all of the intake valve guides. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process on the exhaust valve guides. I've reset my milling head to match the angle on the exhaust guides. And I'm going to start with the main ream, then I'll drive in all six and then ream the guides to suit. So now we've got the exhaust guides installed. I'm going to go ahead and ream using a 9mm ream, same as the intake guides. And then we'll check out clearances once we're all done. Size. The last thing I'm going to do as far as sizing for right now is I'm going to use my ultra fine ball home. And I'm just going to give the valve guide a couple of quick strokes. What this is going to do is it's going to finish any of the machining marks from the reaming tools. It's going to make for an ultra smooth finish on the valve guide. We don't want to do too much just yet because it will take material out of the guide. So all I have left to do now is wash the guide out with a little bit of solvent and we're ready to measure. So the last thing we need to do on the valve guide install is check our valve to guide clearance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my new valves 
that we are going to be installing into the head and I'm going to measure the stems. And the stem on our intake valve is 8.96. I'm just going to measure it in a few places. 8.96 and 8.96. So our valve guide for the intake clearance should be 0.03 to 0.05 of a millimeter. So when we install this valve into the guide and I rock it back and forth and measure that clearance with our dial gauge, we should be in that somewhere in that range. If there is not enough movement, so when I rock the, the valve and it doesn't move enough, then we would hone the guide to open it up. If it has too much clearance, then we would have to go through the process of removing the valve guide again and replacing it as something's gone wrong. So I'm going to measure both my intake and my exhaust. The exhaust valves are set quite a bit looser. Their tolerance is going to be 0.05 to 0.07 of a millimeter. So when we measure the stems, we can also see that the stem is smaller. It's 8.94, which 9.47, so basically 8.95 millimeters. So if our valve guide is correctly reamed to 9 millimeters, that will be set up to give us the correct operating clearances. One thing I need to point out on this particular intake valve. If I measure the valve, we've already looked at it, and it comes up uh, 8.96, 8.96. But on this particular brand of valve, they have laser engraved the part number of the valve. What the problem is, when I first went to put it in the valve guide, is that it was extremely tight until it dropped through. And what I found was when I measured the laser engraved portion of the valve is that the laser engraving had four, caused the metal to stand up and our tolerance now is 8.99 just on this very top area of the valve. So the valve, once it's actually installed, feels good and is smooth and we'll check the clearance but when you go to install it, it was actually felt quite tight. It's something you need to be aware of. Uh, it's not going to pose any operating problems because this part of the valve will not operate uh, anywhere within the guide or the seal range. Normally valves will put their part numbers up here above the collets. So if we look at our exhaust valve, it has the part number above the collet range where this is slightly smaller than the actual valve diameter, so you don't notice anything when you install it. Just something to be aware of. When you are assembling these things, if something doesn't feel right, you need to figure out why. I have the cylinder head in my vise. I'm using aluminum soft jaws so I don't damage the cylinder head. I have the intake valve installed into our cleaned valve guide and I have it approximately 10 millimeters off the seat. That is the height that it will be when it is opened up. I have my dial gauge installed and roughly zeroed. It's very hard to get a good zero point on the dial gauge just because of the way that it contacts the margin of the valve. So all I'm going to do is just rock the valve in the guide and measure my clearance. And on this particular one, if we see, I can rock it back and forth. We are measuring about 0 0.035 of a millimeter. So right on the minimum spec for the clearance of the valve to guide. So I'm going to do the same check on the exhaust valve. The minimum spec that we're looking for on the exhaust valve is 0.05 to 0.07 of a millimeter. And this one is hitting right on 0.05 of a millimeter. So right on the minimum specification range.